shut up and sit down. Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Guru. Thank you for watching. Welcome to 2018. So as I mentioned in my first vlog uh, that I will be doing videos other than 3D printing, and this one is going to be focused on the DeWalt planer that I, uh, I guess I should say I received it for my birthday, but I bought it for myself. Hmm. Not sure how that works. It's a long story, it's complicated, but I've been wanting one of these for quite some time. Uh, planer is one of those kind of essential woodworking tools that if you get into woodworking, you kind of sort of need to do certain things. So with my CNC, I've been experiencing some issues where the wood is not always flat. Sometimes it's cupped. Sometimes it has a bow to it. Sometimes it's got a twist to it. Sometimes it's got all three, more than likely than not. It's got all three. So a planer will help with some of those, and if done properly, actually, the planer can help fix all three of them. So I got the planer, uh, uh, actually, probably about three weeks or so ago, and uh, I've been waiting for the opportunity to break it out and use it, and that's what I did today. So I just want to give you a quick kind of overview of the planer itself. So when I got the planer, I actually got a package deal. Uh, it came with the... Uh, a cart that it sits on as well as some um, the out feed and in feed tables and an, uh, another set of blades uh, replacement blades for the ones that are in there now the blades that are in there can actually be turned around um, they're they're reversible so you uh, and effectively by having an extra set you get four sets of blades so uh, it was an extremely good deal I've been watching this planer for quite some time it was in the you know the six hundred dollar range for the planer and I got the entire package deal, the base, the outfeed and infeed tables, then the extra set of blades and the planer itself for about $650. And then there was some tax in there because I bought it locally. But it was an extremely good deal. Uh, and I should say that's US dollars, obviously. So um, the I'm going to show you some video here of me putting together the table and then getting the planer kind of up and operational. And then my first couple plane operations with it. I did have a little hiccups getting it going. I had uh, futz with the speed um, knob. There's two speeds, one, two. And um, I guess I left it in the middle <laughs> when I was futzing with it. And so when I first tried to feed it pieces of wood through, it was in the middle and it was not doing anything at all. So, you know, lesson learned anyway. So I, I've tried uh, both the, the fast speed and the slow speed. Both work very, very well. And then the, the finish that was produced was excellent. So I'm going to cut over to some uh, time lapse and then we'll follow it up with some pictures of the final products. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm feeding the board in for the very first time and uh, I, I took a very extremely light cut on it just to make sure that the first cut wasn't too, too deep. Um, so I slowly started to, uh, you can see me turning the knob there, turning the knob and taking more uh, of the wood off the top. And so I got to the point where after about, let's say four or five cuts, I was taking about a 16th of an inch off. And so that's about a quarter turn of the knob there. You can see the wood, how it's turning from kind of dark in the middle there to a lighter color. That's, uh, that's where it's trimming off the rough cut that was on this particular board and getting down to a nice smooth face. And recommendations here are is every time you make a cut, it actually, uh, you flip the board around and put it in on the other end. I did that, um, I don't know, half the time. <laughs> Uh, there's some specific reasons for that. Uh, there was a knot on one end of the board and I didn't want to start out uh, feeding the knot in. If something went completely and utterly awry uh, with this planer and there was some kickback, um, you can see that the camera's kind of pretty much behind the, the router and there's a bunch of other stuff on the workbench there. So if it had a uh, kickback and came out the, uh, the wrong end there, and that's why I'm standing off to the side too, by the way. Um, if it had kicked back, it would have been pretty tragic. But it worked out in the end, and I got an exceptionally smooth board. Okay, so what I have here is I actually have a board that I put on a sled. It's a board on another board, or actually three boards on another board. And the reason I did that is I had previously cut the long board into three or four uh, 12 inch sections. And those boards have cupped and twisted since I've cut them. And so a little trick here is if you were to, which is what I've done here, is I've hot glued those boards to a flat board and then I used some wood wedges to essentially provide a little stability under the board so that when you plane it, the, the planer hits a hard surface and it planes it flat, then you flip it over and then you have a flat surface to plane on and you end up with a board that is no longer cupped or twisted. Uh, you actually have a board that is completely flat. Okay, so now I have taken, uh, or I'm in the process of taking the boards off the uh, baseboard and what we're going to do is flip them over and feed them through the router one by one. Now you can see here as I, I forgot to lower the router to the right height, uh, it still had the, the sled height on it. So quickly lowered it and fed the boards through one by one on the router on what was the bottom side, which is now the top side. Because we had planed the top side, the previous top side uh, flat, when we flip it over now and we plane the bottom side, even if it is uh, cupped or twisted or bowed, uh, which you can see at least one of the boards here was, it's gonna make a nice flat surface. Okay, well that was fun. My first use of my very first planer worked out very, very well. Um, I wanna quickly cut over here to some pictures of the wood with the before and after. The first picture here is a picture of the wood, the three different pieces of wood on the sled prior to me cutting it. You can see that it's really rough, rough sawn wood. And the very next picture here, you, it's a close up of the actual wood grain. You can see it's, it's rough, really rough cut and really not usable for anything until it is smoothed out. Now you could sand it, but planing it certainly is the easiest way to go. This picture here is actually a picture of the exact same boards after the planing. You can see that it is, it is just ridiculously smooth. The grain features have come out. It looks amazing. This picture is a close up of the grain structure of the same boards here. You can see the nice figuring, the, the maple. This is a maple board, has uh, lots of different color variations. It's very interesting. The last picture here is just a picture of the floor, the garage. After all the cutting, uh, just a tremendous, tremendous amount of sawdust, a lot of waste, but also a lot of mess. So really recommend a dust collection if you uh, do get a planer. 
Okay, so that is the overview of putting together the base for the planer, putting the planer on it, and planing some boards, both uh, a long board, which was relatively flat, and then a series of smaller boards, which were not flat. <laughs> And you can see how what a great job the planer did. I am super, super impressed. There's a just a little bit of snipe on one of the boards. Uh, nothing to complain about, at least nothing that I can complain about. It is my first planer, so I don't have a whole lot of uh, experience to know that this is good or bad. But the, this particular planer, which is the DeWalt uh, 735, came very highly reviewed. Everyone that has reviewed it and you know all the comments are all positive Obviously, there are more expensive planers out there running, you know over a thousand dollars And the, there's a slightly cheaper less expensive. I should say version of the DeWalt uh, which is the 734 I think and um, The 35 has some features that I, I think are just better it, You don't have to auto or you don't have to engage it manually. It's got an auto engage which uh, having played around with both of them in the store, uh, I definitely think it makes a huge difference to minimize the amount of uh, a snipe and, and whatnot. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll hope to see everyone soon. Thanks everyone.